What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate, and welcome to my channel. Hey, today, second edition of my weekly college football playoff and New Year's Six Bowl game predictions. I put out my first edition a week ago, and um, a lot has changed since then. Uh, there are a couple changes here to my New Year's Six Bowl game predictions, as uh, I mean, this season is just shaping up to be wild. We had a lot of statement wins uh, this past week. And that really changed the way that I am evaluating some of these teams here and predicting that some of these teams finish in these spots. So again, this then end of season prediction, I'm kind of projecting outward and uh, things like that. So, hey, if you're new to the channel, I encourage you hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, like the video, please. Anything you can help support the channel. It does mean a lot to me. Again, this is the second week that I am doing these. So let's go ahead and jump into it. We're going to start with the playoff games first. And then move into the rest of the New Year's Six Bowl slate. How does that sound? All right, so let's start off with the playoff slate. And uh, for the Verbo Fiesta Bowl, I got the Ohio State Buckeyes going to face the Clemson Tigers. Um, I had Ohio State Bama in here. And with Bama's loss, you'll see where I think they fall here. But uh, with Bama's loss, again, there was something in me that just, I think I talked about this. In fact, I almost paused if I talked about this last week. There was something in me that just didn't trust Bama, and it got affirmed last week when they lost to Tennessee. So if you remember, Clemson was the four. They move up a spot. This is my 2-3 matchup right here. Ohio State's playing some of the best football out of any team in the nation. So is Clemson, and Clemson has found that offensive groove. And if they can beat Syracuse this week, they would have already beaten Florida State, NC State, Wake Forest, and then if they're able to beat Syracuse this week, would have beaten Syracuse as well, which are by far the four best teams in that division for uh, the Clemson Tigers. So, uh, hey, right? <laughs> I mean, Clemson playing really, really well right now. They have found that offense. They are moving along in the ACC, playing some really good ball. And uh, if they can beat Syracuse this week, they're probably going to be well on their way to playing in Charlotte for another ACC title. Same thing with Ohio State. Don't really have to explain much. They were on bye this past week, but C.J. Stroud playing with his hair on fire. The odds on Heisman favor right now, although there is, there is Hendon Hooker that is starting to close that gap, but still it seems like it's C.J. Stroud's to lose still at this point. And Ohio State's playing really well. Uh, they uh, expect to have Jackson Smith and Jigba back for this game and get healthier uh, as the back half of the season goes along, which is going to really benefit Ohio State down the stretch. My other playoff matchup, of course, Georgia is going to be in there. But now there's a conversation for that fourth spot, right? Is it Michigan? Is it Tennessee? Does Alabama find some way back in there as a team out of the Big 12? Well, I think right now it's the Michigan Wolverines. Projecting outward, I, I, I see Michigan making the college football playoff. Uh, it, it, it was either Michigan or Tennessee for me. Uh, of course, let's talk about Georgia for a minute before we talk about Michigan. Because Georgia is a team that, look, Georgia's playing really well. And I know they've looked vulnerable for a couple of weeks. But... Georgia, at this point in time, doesn't seem like they're going to drop a game. Although, again, they still have to play Tennessee. Florida is coming up on this schedule here as well. Uh, Georgia's also still got to play Kentucky. Mississippi State on the road. I mean, there are hard games for Georgia left. Um, but uh, all in all, the way that Georgia's been playing these last couple of weeks, don't necessarily see them dropping a game up to this point. Although, again, they, again, it's college football. You could absolutely lose one there. Uh, but for the Georgia Bulldogs, they're playing some really good ball right now, offensively, defensively. Got them as my number one seed. And then the four seed, to me, came down to Michigan and Tennessee. And what it came down to was, okay, who do I think, not necessarily who's going to have, well, it, it was part of, like, who's going to have the better resume because that's what a playoff committee likes to see um, and everything like that. So uh, neither of Michigan or Tennessee – more likely if the, if the favorites win out, and that's a big thing, if the favorites win out, Michigan nor Tennessee will make their conference championship game. So it comes down to which team has some better wins. Well, um, Michigan's only loss will be to Ohio State, which, if the favorites win out, are likely the conference champions. And again, same thing with Tennessee. Uh, they would Their only loss would have been to Georgia, who would have been conference champs. And Georgia's the number one team, Ohio State's number two. It was a really difficult dis uh, discussion. But in my mind, what I came down to was, I just think Michigan is a better team than Tennessee. And I think Michigan also um, has the potential, or, or, or 
excuse me, I think Tennessee has a bigger potential of dropping another game somewhere down the line than Michigan does. That's why Michigan is in here as the fourth best team uh, in my playoff field, but they're still playing some really good football. I mean, Michigan's playing really well. Blake Corum is playing st stupidly out of his mind. That offense is moving. The defense has looked phenomenal. Uh, Michigan going to be a really, really good team this year. Make no mistake about that. Uh, both Ohio State and Michigan actually could be 11-0 going into the shoe, which, man, that's going to make things fun. All right, moving on here to the rest of the New Year's Six Bowl games. Starting out with the Orange Bowl, uh, I got the Al this is where I have the Alabama Crimson Tide. Again, there was just something I didn't like about Alabama, and uh, I think we're going to find Alabama here in the Orange Bowl. Now, very well could find themselves in the Sugar Bowl here as well, but as far as right now, my projection, I got Alabama going to uh, the, the Orange Bowl. Th there was just... Some very concerning things said around this Alabama program by Nick Saban, by Will Anderson, among some other players, and just that the intensity wasn't there. And this is an Alabama program that, uh, uh, if you guys watch Josh Pate, you would have heard this already, so I'm going to restate this. But um, he, he said something that I've been thinking for quite a long time is just, Bama, the intensity wasn't there on Saturday, and the intensity is usually there for this program. Even when they win national championships, they're still complaining on, or not necessarily complaining on the sidelines, but they're still on the sidelines like, hey, man, you could have done this better, and getting into their teammates, which is such a good characteristic to have. They didn't have that on Saturday, and that's why they lost. Wake Forest is here as my ACC representative in the Orange Bowl. I like the way Wake Forest has been playing, and with the news about Devin Leary and NC State, I think Wake Forest is now that second best team in the ACC. Don't get me wrong, you can find North Carolina in this position right now, but just the way I'm projecting, uh, Wake Forest is going to be that team there in the Orange Bowl representing the ACC. Sam Hartman, A.T. Perry playing some really good ball right now. Uh, it's just the one thing I want to see from Wake Forest is, again, can that defense continue to get better? I think that's going to be a big thing for the Demon Deacons. As now we move on. Uh, to the All-State Sugar Bowl. This is where I have the Tennessee Volunteers. Now, you could just as easily have Tennessee and Alabama flip places, and I honestly would have no problem with that. No problem with that at all. It's just the way I'm projecting right now. You have Tennessee, who has the win over Alabama. Alabama likely still goes to the SEC Championship game, but even so, I got Tennessee in here as the Sugar Bowl. I truly believe, as of right now, this is the second-best team in the SEC behind the Georgia Bulldogs. Um, and that's why they're in the Sugar Bowl. I mean, Hendon Hooker is playing out of his mind. That offense is one of, if not the best offense in the entire nation. One thing I want to see from Tennessee, that defense needs to get better, right? That defense has got to get better if Tennessee's going to want to even make a push towards the college football playoff, which at this point seems absolutely within reach, but that defense has got to start playing a lot more of uh, a lot more cohesive football. Meanwhile, Texas is here on the other side, and with Oklahoma State uh, the, g going down, I've lost a little bit of faith in them. Uh, th th this has happened a couple weeks now where Oklahoma State has had to pull out games late, or they just haven't been able to close out a game, or they didn't finish strong, and that's really going to hurt them when they play a team like Texas this week, which may give you an indication of who I'm picking in that matchup this week. But I believe that Texas right now, I know there's TCU and the Horned Frogs are playing really well. Again, it's that defense for TCU. Want to see them get better. Texas uh, with Quinn Ewers there is playing well on both sides of the ball. Uh, and I like Texas to make the Sugar Bowl as of right now. Again, things can change. TCU still a really good team. Oklahoma State still within reach to get to that Sugar Bowl there as well. In fact, the winner of the Big 12 still up in the arms for who gets that thing. Uh, in the Cotton Bowl, my prediction has not changed, so I won't lull on this one too much, but I still have the Oregon Ducks and the Cincinnati Bearcats here in the Cotton Bowl. Uh, both these teams coming off bye weeks. Cincinnati, I believe, has SMU this week, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's right. And Oregon's got a big-time matchup with UCLA, so if Oregon ends up dropping that game to UCLA, you might find UCLA in next week's New Year's Six Bowl game predictions, and they absolutely could still have, uh, UCLA still has a phenomenal shot to get to a New Year's Six Bowl game. Beat Oregon, uh, UCLA's already beaten Utah, you got USC on the schedule there as well, and really not much else, maybe a couple games you got to watch out for, but Oregon-UCLA, that's going to be a big game this week, I will be predicting that game tomorrow, 
weekly predictions come out tomorrow. And uh, again, Cincinnati playing really well ever since that loss to Arkansas. They've had a couple close calls, but they've been able to pull them out. And I still think Cincinnati, even after last week, is that best team in the group of five realm. So now moving on to the Rose Bowl, where I still have the USC Trojans, despite that loss to the Utah Utes. Uh, I believe that USC still will find their way in the Pac-12 championship game. And I think as of right now, we're my favorites to go ahead and still win the Pac-12. Uh, they've been playing really well. Again, you guys know how good of a team I think Utah is. But I think when the lights shine brightest towards the end of the season, I think USC is going to shine. And then I have Penn State here in the Rose Bowl with two Big Ten teams making the college football playoff in my eyes as of right now. I got Penn State here finishing out that Rose Bowl, which I do believe as that third best team in the Big Ten and with both Ohio State and Michigan in the playoff, uh, Penn State would be that best Big Ten team available to go to the Rose Bowl. I really like Penn State. I know they just got embarrassed against Michigan, uh, but Penn State's going to find their groove. Uh, they got a big time game this week at home against Minnesota. It's the whiteout. And then an even bigger time game the week after that on the 29th. They get to go host Ohio State. That's going to be the big noon kickoff game. It's a shame that that is not the whiteout and night game. Uh, but, hey, what can you do? Penn State still, I think, is going to have a really, really good good season once it's all said and done. Could absolutely find themselves 10-2, and two, maybe if they trip up somewhere 9-3. and three. But I still think Penn State's going to find themselves in a solid bowl game. And right now I have them as a New Year's Six bowl game team. So that's going to do it for my New Year's Six Bowl game predictions. Here is my playoff field. Again, I got Georgia and Michigan in the Peach Bowl, Ohio State and Clemson in the Fiesta Bowl. And right now, it is between, right now, it is between Michigan and Tennessee for that fourth spot. I have no problem if you want to go ahead and throw Tennessee in the playoff, even at number three, uh, and drop Clemson down the floor. I mean, but in my eyes right now, Michigan is playing better complementary football. And while Tennessee's offense may be just ridiculous, Tennessee's defense definitely needs work. And that's why I have Michigan. Excuse me, sorry. And that's why I have Michigan in the playoff field. But let me know your guys' playoff field down in the comment section below. Some New Year's Six bowl game predictions that you guys have as of right now. And hey, look forward to seeing you guys. Weekly predictions come out tomorrow for what are we in week eight now? Yeah, we are in week eight. So week eight predictions come out tomorrow. But until then, remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. I'll see all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.